Number 10. The Mask of Alexander Pedden The mask was first discovered in the 1840s in a small cottage in Cumnock, Scotland. This grim family heirloom was a crude mixture of leather, human hair, and even human teeth. While this mask can, without a doubt, fuel nightmares, it did play a very important role for its original owner. Alexander Sandy Pedden, also known as the Prophet of the Covenant, was born in Ayrshire, Scotland, around 1626. He went to Glasgow University before becoming minister in New Luce in 1659. Unfortunately for Pedden, only two short years after becoming minister, the Stuart Restoration of 1661 hit the British Isles, forcing Pedden to leave his beloved church behind. He later went on to become a field preacher, speaking out against the English crown. He became the best field preacher in all of Scotland. In turn, this made Pedden a very wanted man by the government. Pedden wore this horrifying mask to protect his identity from soldiers who were looking for him and keep preaching out against what he saw as injustice to the Scottish people. This unfortunately didn't work for long, as Pedden later had to flee to Ireland to escape the English military and the laws. Pedden went back and forth from Scotland to Ireland a number of times before dying in 1686. A little under two months later, the English crown sent troops to dig up his body and rebury it two miles away as one last act of disrespect on his name and memory. Number 9. The House Full of Bones We've all had a nightmare or two of finding something terrifying lurking in your home. Maybe even in the dead of night, you've heard something knocking, trying to get you to let it in. Well, in July of 2013, a contractor tasked with cleaning out an abandoned house in Poughkeepsie, New York, made a gruesome discovery behind a false wall in the basement. He found the remains of a woman named Joanne Nichols. Her skeleton was found sealed in a large plastic bin, covered in plastic wrap and wrapped in a sheet. Her hands were tied tight with rope, and there was visible blunt force trauma to the side of her head. The only way police were able to identify her was through dental records. Her late husband, James Nichols, reported Joanne missing on the 21st of November 1985, after she failed to show up for her hair appointment. The police launched an intense investigation, in which they didn't find anything. James was found dead in his home in December of 2012, of natural causes. And since the discovery of Joanne's remains, James has been a suspect in the murder case. While this case remains cold to this day, it makes you wonder what secrets your house might be hiding. Number 8. Headless Axe Murderer The year is 1979, and deep underground in a network of volcanic caves, a family hunting for arrowheads discovered a man's headless torso in eastern Idaho. The torso belonged to a bootlegger and axe murderer by the name of Joseph Henry Lovelace. Talk about a family outing. Lovelace died sometime during the spring-summer of 1916 after escaping jail. Besides the smuggling and selling of illegal liquor, he brutally murdered his wife by beating her brains out with an axe, in the words of a local newspaper at the time. His mummified hand was later found on March 30, 1991, by an 11-year-old girl exploring the same cave where Lovelace's body was found. This tipped off officials to search more thoroughly throughout the area and found later his arm and both legs. Researchers and students from Idaho State University spent months looking for his head, but they could never find it. However, it wasn't until January of 2020 his remains could be identified via the DNA Doe Project, a project to use genetics to help identify John Doe's. Lovelace's body, or what was left of it, was almost perfectly preserved due to the cold conditions in the cave. Even his socks were perfectly intact. Officials even found his 87-year-old grandson in California to compare DNA with. Now, if he was the axe murderer, why was he cut into pieces? While authorities can't say with any degree of certainty, one of the researchers working on the case has a theory. His ex-wife's family was in town to collect her body right around the time Loveless broke out of jail. Put two and two together, and that makes for a few more than just two pieces in a cave. Number 7. The 2,000-year-old cold case, the old crow and man. This one is for the true crime fans out there. A 2,000-year-old possible murder case in Ireland. Meet the old crow and man, a bog-preserved torso with arms, found in 2003 near Crowan Hill in County Offaly, not too far from Dublin. The old crow and man, or what was left of him provided researchers with some rather specific evidence as to who he was. He stood at roughly six foot five, and his body presented little to no signs of having worked in physical labor, showing that he was most likely a member of upper society, and maybe even a pretty big deal during his time. 
in the area he was found. This theory is further backed up by the chemical analysis of his remaining hair and nails that showed that his diet was rich in meat, a rare luxury during that time. From here, the theory does become murky, as the state of his remains could be described as overkill to say the least. There was a slash in his upper left arm, which researchers believe is a defensive wound. The wound was stitched up with hazel branches, but he was still stabbed in the chest, neck, decapitated, and eventually cut in half. Eamon P. Kelly, a keeper of Irish antiquities at the National Museum of Ireland, suggested that the old crone man wasn't murdered at all, but rather he was sacrificed. He believed he was a failed king or a failed candidate for kingship, who was likely killed and placed in a bog that formed important tribal boundaries. The old crow and nipples were cut. Sucking a king's nipples in ancient Ireland was a gesture of submission, and cutting them would have made him incapable of kingship. His body may have served as an offering to the goddess of the land. According to Kelly, his multiple injuries may reflect the belief that the goddess was not only one of the land of fertility, but also of sovereignty, war, and death. Kelly said, by using a range of methods to kill the victim, the ancient Irish sacrificed to the goddess in all her forms. What do you think? Was this guy violently murdered or was he sacrificed? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Dark Matter We've all wondered how the universe fits together, how it works in the way that the cosmic pinwheels of galaxies do. Well, for that, we have to thank dark matter. While dark matter isn't creepy in the traditional sense, it's more of an existential flavor of creepiness. First theorized in the 1930s, and then later confirmed to be an accepted theory in the scientific community in the 1980s, researchers are fairly certain that dark matter is the glue that holds galaxies together. Well, maybe. NASA researchers are more sure of what it isn't rather than what it is. What they do know is that a mathematical model that would work to show the composition of a universe falls into something like this. 68% dark energy, 27% dark matter, 5% normal matter. Without getting too into the realm of astrophysics, here's what NASA knows dark matter is not. It's not just invisible normal matter, as there are gravitational waves that don't line up with our known models of normal matter. It's not galaxy-sized black holes, as light doesn't bend around the area of study, as light tends to do around black holes. Dark matter gets a spot on this list because of this lack of understanding of what this stuff is, and most importantly, what it can or can't do. Do you have any theories on the possibilities of dark matter? Let us know your thoughts down below. Number 5. Pit of Death In eastern France, a literal pit of gruesome violence was uncovered in 2012. Originally found in Bergheim, France, just west of the border with Germany, the bodies of two men, one woman, four children, and one infant skull, dating back to roughly 6,000 years ago, were discovered. The bodies were piled in a pit that already contained a collection of left arms, is soon to be hacked up by axes or other sharp tools. Researchers are not sure if the left arms were targeted for a particular reason, but some believe they may have been taken as trophies. At the bottom of the pit, there were scattered hand bones suggesting that the hands from the severed limbs had been deliberately cut into little pieces. Even more gruesome was that no one knew where the rest of the bodies that were missing these limbs were. The full skeletons in the pit all had their arms intact. However, the researchers studying the site are starting to believe that these pits and this style of corpse disposal was much more common in ancient Europe than previously believed. Closer inspections of human bones previously found in circular pits like this elsewhere in Europe will reveal additional details of violent deaths from a time when conflicts occurred between some communities. Some of these conflicts were more violent than others. Some researchers simply regard these pits as ancient storage silos that were put to other uses. Others argue that most pits were dug as graves for individuals of higher status whose servants or relatives were killed to accompany them into the afterlife. Or perhaps slaves might have been killed and put in the pits as displays of wealth or as sacrifices to the gods. The more archaeologists keep digging around in ancient places, the more we'll discover about the past of our ancestors. Number 4. The Big Fin Squid, or Magna Pinidae. With only 5% of the Earth's water explored, it remains much of a mystery as to what lurks in the pitch black depths of the ocean. The few creatures that we have found are generally considered otherworldly. With the exception of the Big Fin Squid, or Magna Pinidae, 
while it looks like something from the darkest nightmares of an alien, this is indeed a real creature that lives around 12,000 feet below the surface. First found in a fisherman's net off the coast of Portugal in 1905, we know almost nothing about these mysterious underwater critters. Researchers know very little about them. In only the 12 total sightings we've seen in our recorded history, we've only ever found juveniles, so we don't even know how big they get. Researchers were able to measure one specimen using underwater lasers. It measured 5.9 feet, with the body being about 6 inches. To make matters even stranger, there have been sightings from Portugal to Brazil to Australia, meaning that if you live near the coast, there's a likelihood that you're boating right over the top of a group of these out-of-this-world beings. Number 3. Ancient Mustard Gas Warfare is usually a messy, scary business, especially if you mix in chemicals that can blind, choke, and kill. Normally, when we think about chemical warfare, we think of the trenches of World War I, mustard gas, and gas masks. Well, the history of chemical warfare actually goes back way further. The earliest evidence goes all the way back to 256 CE in Dura Europos, or what's now eastern Syria. Discovered in 2009 by British archaeologists, a tomb of 20 Roman soldiers was found with residues of sulfur crystals and bitumen, which when burned can turn the mucus into human lungs to acid. The Syrians were attempting to take the city back from the Romans by digging tunnels to secretly bring in more troops. The Romans countered by digging their own tunnels and in turn exposed themselves to the Syrians. The Syrians lit a toxic fire and blocked off the exits to the Roman tunnels. They died breathing the fumes of hell noted one of the British researchers. Number 2. Zombie Worm or Osidax Despite the name, the zombie worm or the Osidax doesn't actually crave brains. Well, at least not at first. First discovered in 2002, the 1-3 to three inch worms live at a depth of 10,000 feet under the ocean and they really blur the lines of understanding when it comes to animals. First things first, they feast on the bones of any animal, from grey whales to fish to even cows that fall off ships or get tossed into the seven seas. However, without a mouth or stomach, they eat in a truly disgusting and horrific way. These zombie worms secrete an acid from their skin to dissolve the bones into the world's worst slurpee. And the bactrim in the worms' bodies sucks it up through their pores and then somehow transfer the energy and nutrients to the worm. Researchers still don't understand how they get any nutrients from the bones. But the worms don't seem to care too much about what researchers think. The strangest part of this worm is that the females are the only ones eating any of the bones. The microscopic males simply live inside the female and feed on whatever she's feeding on. One female was observed with over 110 males living inside her. Talk about clingy boyfriends. Number 1. Shigir Idol The Shigir Idol is the oldest known piece of ritual art. It's a sinister 9-foot-tall wooden totem pole. It's over 11,600 years old, making it thousands of years older than the pyramids and Stonehenge. It has baffled researchers and archaeologists since it was first discovered in 1890, dug out of a peat bog by gold miners in Russia. The relic, or what's left of it, is carved from a massive slab of freshly cut larch. Geometric patterns are scattered all over it, and eight human faces, each with slashes for eyes, that seem to peer out at whoever is gazing upon it. The idol has raised more questions than answers when it comes to the true nature of the past. No one who comes into contact with the idol has ever felt a sense of peace when looking at it. Thomas Turberger, an archaeologist and head of research at the Department of Cultural Heritage for Lower Saxony in Germany, had this to say about the nature of the carving. Whether it screams or shouts or sings, it projects authority, possibly malevolent authority. It's not immediately a friend of yours much less an ancient friend of yours. Number 8. Mosul Dam The Mosul Dam in Iraq stands at a height of 370 feet and with a length of 11,975 feet. It takes its name from Mosul, the second largest Iraqi city after the country's capital Baghdad. It was built in 1986 and took approximately five years to complete. The dam is considered dangerous partly because it's made of mud. Yes, you heard that right. While mud is a perfectly acceptable building material, it might not be the best material to use for a dam. You know, with all the water moving against it and everything. We're not engineers, but it strikes us as a little hazardous. 
Also, its location can be somewhat problematic. If the Mosul Dam gave way, as many as 500,000 to 1 million people could lose their lives. According to sources, the loose mud is being punished by the water and that means the dam requires a lot of maintenance. A relief dam is supposed to be built in case of emergencies, however, it hasn't been built yet. Iraq is making moves to try and address these concerns. Should the dam break, the water would reportedly reach a level of 16.4 feet in just a few days, with flooding taking place across a wide area. The potential impact has been compared to a tsunami, and remember how we said the location was a potential problem? Iraq has been pretty chaotic. Throw in the fact that the dam's home base isn't the safest place to be, and this sounds like a recipe for impending disaster. We hope authorities can get everything straightened out before something terrible happens. Number 7. Jinping Yi Dam The Jinping Yi Dam is in the southwestern province of Sichuan, China, is 1,001 feet tall and 1,865 feet long. It took eight years to build and was finished in 2013. The dam was named after the Chinese leader Xi Jinping and is what's known as an arch dam. That's when an arch shape is created that naturally strains, enabling it to bear the brunt of extreme water pressure. It's on Yalong River and is part of a huge project to generate hydroelectric power. Sounds exciting, yet experts have expressed doubts on just how safe the Jinping Yi Dam is. Reports from 2014 claim that the dam could potentially have been connected to seismic activity in the area. This type of construction has boosted water levels in the region to almost 656 feet higher than they were before. But how has this potentially led to the ground beneath people's feet shaking? It's through something called reservoir-induced seismicity, which has been noted in other structures that lie on fault lines. It doesn't sound like a wonderful idea to build dams on fault lines, but hey, we don't make the rules. So what would happen if the dam was breached? The reservoir reportedly contains billions of cubic meters of water, so it would be pretty bad, to say the least, if the dam burst. Number 6. Three Gorges Dam Situated on the famous Yangtze River in the central Chinese province of Hubei, the Three Gorges Dam is 594 feet high and 7,661 feet long. It can churn out an epic 22,500 megawatts of hydropower when it's fully running, making this dam the world leader in terms of output. It's built out of concrete and steel and is a gravity dam, where a cross-section shaped like a triangle is used to brace the dam against water pressure. However, as with any huge and heavy structure holding back countless gallons of water, it does have an impact on its surroundings, including disastrous landslides. It may be good for holding in water, but when the reservoir connected to the dam erodes, it has a powerful effect on the environment. Floods have taken their toll on China in recent years, during a period where the country already experienced hardship due to the coronavirus pandemic. The Three Gorges Dam and other structures is what stands between communities and disaster. You can certainly try and control Mother Nature, but when she bites back, she does it hard. So you need to be as prepared as possible. Number 5. Monticello Dam The Monticello Dam, located in Lake Berryessa in the Vaca Mountains, California, is a beautiful tourist destination. Here you'll find this impressive arch dam, which is 304 feet high and 1,023 feet long. It also has a reservoir stretching 26 miles. After a four-year construction period, the dam opened in 1957. Compared to some of the other listings, this dam is relatively safe. Reports state that it's protected the area from flooding to the tune of approximately $5 million. So what's it doing on our list of most dangerous dams? Well, the trouble isn't so much to do with the dam letting in water, but rather a part of the structure known as the glory hole. Yes, that's really what it's called. Unwary birds, animals, and even people can be drawn into the hole, which is also referred to as a spillway. Designed to direct the flow of excess water, they can become death traps. There has been tragedy associated with the spillway. In 1987, a woman was killed while out swimming after being drawn into the hole by the strong current. Number 4. Viant Dam Building a dam can be an ambitious undertaking. The Viant Dam in Italy was a project that was seemingly cutting edge but also deeply flawed, resulting in terrible tragedy. Located in the Belluno province in the northwest of the country, it was opened in the early 1960s after three years of construction. It stands at 860 feet high and is 520 feet long. 
It's one of the tallest dams in the world. These days, it lies unused. While it was in operation for a number of years, it provided to be a living nightmare for the local area. The double arch structure was admired. A lot of modern technology went into making the Vion Dam a reality. Unfortunately, it's believed that an emphasis on the dam itself and not the region it served was what resulted in a horrific landslide. The nearby mountain of Montetoc suffered a geological disaster when part of its top broke away. This load of rock landed in the dam's reservoir, triggering a mega tsunami that swept down into the communities below. Approximately 2,000 people lost their lives. One village, Longarone, lost a third of its population. A bitter legal battle ensued where authorities justified their building of the dam while the public tried to hold them and engineers accountable for any errors that could have led to the tragedy. Arguments about whether the flood was an act of God, whether warnings over the environmental impact had been ignored, and to what extent profit was placed before human lives raged on. It doesn't seem like any definitive conclusion was reached, though the fallout certainly generated a lot of anger as you could imagine. It shows how a combination of error plus unstable geography can create complete chaos out of something that's designed to help people. Number 3. Kariba Dam this is the Concrete Kariba Dam, located in the Kariba Gorge between Zambia and Zimbabwe. Part of the Zambezi River Basin, this dam created its own body of water in the shape of Lake Kariba. It's 420 feet high and 1,900 feet long. It was officially opened in 1960 by the late Queen Elizabeth, five years after construction started. A reported 57,000 people needed to be relocated to make way for the dam and its hydroelectric capacity. The end result provides cheap energy to the area, but it's easy to forget that this comes at a human cost. And the Kariba Dam has suffered a lot in relation to this. 86 men lost their lives putting it together. The dam is a double curvature arch dam designed to use water pressure to strengthen itself against its foundations. Concerning reports have come in about a crater at the base of the dam. Apparently, the basalt rock bottom has eroded over time. Should the dam break, which some believe it will, the old concrete will give way and release enough water to endanger millions of people. Number 2. Aswan Dam While Egypt has been dominated by the awesome spectacle of the River Nile, it's only relatively recently that they've taken advantage of it for generating power. When the British were in town in the early 20th century, they installed a low dam and the building continued after they left, with a high dam put in place in 1970 after a decade of construction. At 364 feet high and 12,570 feet long, it's an embankment dam created using a mound of rock. It was the world's largest such dam at the time it was unveiled. Its location is the city of Aswan, whose influence in Egypt dates back to ancient times. The building of the Aswan High Dam was an incident-packed story, rooted as it is in the country's turbulent history. For starters, we mentioned there was a low dam constructed earlier. However, this dam was almost never built at all. Attempts to get a dam going were underway since the 11th century. It was only in 1898 that the idea finally became a reality, yet there were further obstacles. Talks of a high dam in Aswan weren't appreciated by the royal government, so there was no way the project was going to get off the drawing board. Until the Egyptian Revolution, that is, which saw the country led by President Gamal Abdel Nasser. On his watch, the high dam went under construction. There were various reported issues with the dam, including substandard construction work and, worst of all, leaks. That's something you really don't want to hear about a dam. Before the dam was officially opened, the connecting lake impacted heavily on the Nubian population who were flooded. Tens of thousands had to leave an environment where they'd relied on the local water supply. From there, they went out to the dry desert. Arguments over their displacement continue to this day. Also, the high dam affected Egypt's ancient history, so famous worldwide for its tales of mighty pharaohs and mysterious pyramids. Abu Simbel's pharaonic temples needed to be moved elsewhere to stop them from being submerged. They dismantled an ancient site and relocated it. It's amazing the effect a dam can have on its surroundings. It also reportedly caused damage to the Nile's ecosystem. Number 1. Koina Dam 
The Koina Dam is located in the town of Koina Nagar in the state of Maharashtra on India's western peninsula. It was built on the Koina River between 1956 and 1964. At 339 feet high and 2,648 feet long, the dam is the largest power plant in the country generating electricity from water. Like any dam, it has a spillway. It is vital for directing water when the turbulent monsoon season rolls around. However, a disruptive environment results in problems for any structure, with a dam being among the most important in terms of things that could go wrong. India is no stranger to earthquakes, and these take their toll on the Koina Dam. A quake measuring 6.3 in magnitude struck the area in 1967, which broke open the concrete. What do you do with a cracked dam? Shut it down? You could, but that would be very expensive, and what would happen to the water supply for the local area? No, in this case, grout is applied to fill up the cracks. Also, the Indian authorities created more holes deliberately. The holes were made internally in order to relieve pressure. As for what triggered the 67 quake, there's an argument going on. Did the reservoir create the seismic activity behind the quake as concluded by geologists? To this day, there's been no definitive explanation. Number 8. Sir Bruce Ingham Imagine your friend has arrived back from a trip abroad and he's brought you a gift. Aw, how considerate. But wait, what the hell is he handing over? Actually, handing over is about right, because the present is an actual hand. This was the bizarre situation that Sir Bruce Ingham found himself in when his friend Howard Carter gave him a mummified appendage. Carter was the famous archaeologist who, in 1922, took a peek inside the Egyptian tomb of Tutankhamun. This notable pharaoh had been sealed away in a valley of the king's burial chamber and may well have thought that he'd stay that way for all eternity. The British, however, had other plans, though they came to regret their arguably unwise move. It said a curse was placed on the men who entered the tomb that year. The terrible affliction followed them and apparently killed some of them, which is the subject of this video and what you want to hear about, right? How does Sir Bruce Ingham fit into all of this? We'll tell you. He didn't die or anything. We didn't want to go straight into the grim stuff, but some pretty weird stuff happened after he received the hand, which was intended to be used as a paperweight. Yeah, you heard that right. For starters, the bracelet in the hand, yes, it was all blinged up, carried a message. This reportedly read, Cursed be he who moves my body. To him shall come fire, water, and pestilence. It didn't say anything about stopping documents from blowing off your desk. Either way, Sir Bruce Ingham wouldn't have a desk for much longer, as his house would go on to be consumed by fire. And if you think that sounds like a bad coincidence, wait till you hear what happened next. He had the house rebuilt, and then it was flooded. At that point, Ingham decided to ditch the paperweight before things got worse. Good plan. Number 7. Lord Carnarvon That previous entry was a little spooky, but we know what you're thinking. What about the people who allegedly lost their lives as a result of the curse of Tutankhamun? Arguably, the most prominent of these was George Herbert, the 5th Earl of Carnarvon in Northwest Wales, Great Britain. Also referred to as Lord Carnarvon, he passed away from blood poisoning. But was this related to Howard Carter's work in Egypt? Let's go over the gory details. He suffered a mosquito bite, not an unusual thing out in Egypt for sure. However, he then cut it open during a routine shave. Now, medical science would say he developed an infection and died, but others beg to differ. The Lord's death naturally made headlines, and no less a figure than Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of Sherlock Holmes, got people's imagination spinning with his speculations. The media already featured wild stories about a curse, yet Conan Doyle went a stage further by suggesting unearthly forces in the tomb area had caught up with Lord Carnarvon and killed him. The Lord's status as the person who funded the excavation of King Tut surely put him in a prime position for retribution from the ghosts of ancient Egypt. Lord Carnarvon was at the Continental Savoy Hotel in Cairo when he died in 1923. Narrative tension was heightened when a story went around that the lights went out in the city on his passing. Did this happen or not? We can't say it did with any certainty, so let's focus on some other details. The mosquito bite has been described as severe. A severe mossy bite? This must have been some bug that got him, right? Was the mosquito actually a messenger of doom from the ancient pharaoh himself? 
We're being a bit lighthearted, of course, but how serious is the idea that Lord Canavan died from a curse? Not very, according to experts. They point to the fact that he wasn't too well to begin with, bite or no bite. Also, he reportedly developed pneumonia, and that's what got him. We're thinking pneumonia may not have been a weapon of choice for the ancient Egyptians back in the day. Number 6. Walter Brian Emery the eerie excavation of Tutankhamun is rightly world famous and the thing everyone thinks of when you mention ancient Egyptian curses. But there are other scary stories where folk have died in what some might say are alarming circumstances. Take Brian Emery for example. He was a British Egyptologist who passed away from a stroke in Cairo in 1971. What had happened in the run up to this tragic event? He recently been involved in an excavation in the area of Saqqara, a village in Giza that you may be familiar with through its featuring in a Netflix series about the archaeology there. Anyway, back in the 1970s, Emery had found a small statue of Osiris, which he took back to his abode with him. If you don't know who Osiris is, then prepare yourself, because they're the god of death. Would you take a statue of a deathly figure and put it where you were going to sleep? It was reportedly a small statue, but even so, as an experienced Egyptologist, it seems Mr. Emery didn't heed such things and decided it should go along with him. He then became paralyzed down his right side and his assistant discovered him in the bathroom. Emery was hospitalized, but sadly suffered another stroke a couple of days later. This one killed him. Terrible indeed, but apparently he loved Egypt and was buried there, so we're guessing that's what he would have wanted. Was it a sheer coincidence that his health failed not long after transporting the Osiris statue? It probably was, though the timing is bound to fuel speculation about vengeful forces coming to get people who interfere with the realm of the deceased. Number 5. Hugh Evelyn White Did you know that a lot of people involved with the excavation of Tutankhamun's tomb died following their work in Egypt? We're not talking of natural causes either. Over 20 died in total, making the case for a curse truly compelling. Is there sufficient evidence to claim this, or is the whole situation just a little overstated? Of course, explanations exist as to why these individuals passed away. We can't, with any certainty, state that these people were struck down by an alleged curse in one way or another. Yet, when you look at a story such as that of Hugh Evelyn White, you have to wonder whether there's something in it. Let's take a big pinch of salt and look into the circumstances in which he died. He's been described as one of the first to enter the Pharaoh's tomb in 1922. Two years on and he was no more. Hold on, a couple of years? If it was a curse that got him, it was taking its sweet time. Well, what actually happened was that Evelyn White tragically took his own life, and some have drawn attention to the note he left, which read, I've succumbed to a curse which forces me to disappear. This message was allegedly written in blood, though we won't become too lurid here, owing to the fact that a man has died and he should be shown respect. He died at his own hand by hanging in the city of Leeds in Yorkshire, England. Did he commit suicide because of the curse? And if so, how was it affecting him? Ultimately, we can't say, and experts have pointed to other details which may have resulted in his eventual demise. He'd reportedly suffered a major bereavement after a close friend of his passed away, a possible contributing factor to whatever his psychological state was at the time. Also, and rather interestingly, it isn't clear whether he was actually involved in the excavation itself, though he was definitely at the tomb. Those feeling terrible following their experience at Tut's tomb may have been affected by ancient fungi. These molds came as a result of foodstuffs left in the chamber, part of the whole business of keeping the pharaoh in tip-top shape for his journey to the next world. Some experts have pointed out that this might be a key element behind the sheer number of deaths. Evelyn White killed himself, so he doesn't fall into this category, especially if he didn't get up close and personal with the relics. That said, the idea of a curse grew in power due to the unfortunate circumstances that unfolded in the years following this momentous archaeological event. Number 4. Return of the Relic Away from the claustrophobic terror of Tutankhamun's tomb is another story connected to a fearsome curse. This one is more up to date coming as it does from the 21st century and a desire to right a wrong caused by the light-fingered and unwary. In 2004, an artifact described as a carving or fragment with hieroglyphs on it was taken from Egypt to Germany by someone who went on to suffer various afflictions. 
The man ultimately died from cancer, but before that, felt paralyzed, nauseous, and feverish. Was this connected to the artifact, or was the individual simply in poor health? The man's stepson wasn't going to take any chances. He believed strongly enough that a curse had been placed on the family, so he brought the ancient item to the Egyptian embassy in Berlin, who then sent it home. Better safe than sorry, though it isn't definitive proof that a curse existed. Would certainly scare us silly, though, we have to say. Number 3. Richard Bethel Captain the Honorable Richard Bethel held the post of secretary to Howard Carter. When he died, he too was drawn into the web of conspiracy and the supernatural that had been weaved around the so-called curse of Tutankhamun. Bethel passed away at the Bath Club in Mayfair, London in 1929 some time after the tomb had been excavated, of course, though his connection to the dig made headlines. Mention was made of fire at his home, though this was in fact arson committed by Bethel's footmen. Still, it was easy for some to assume that dark forces were at play. Bethel died after reportedly being smothered in his bedroom at the club, possibly another reason for suspicion to be raised about the curse. Whatever happened, Bethel was gone and his demise took a toll on his father, who was the third Baron of Westbury. Westbury being a town and parish in Wiltshire, England. Baron Westbury committed suicide in 1930 by jumping from the seventh floor of his apartment building. He was reportedly ill and devastated by the loss of his son. However, stories emerged that he was subject to the curse associated with Richard. This has been debunked as tittle-tattle with the man's suicide note describing his inner torment, but not saying anything to do with ancient Egypt. Number 2. Titanic Mummy Theory You'd think the story of the Titanic was straightforward. Tragic for sure, but also very much an earthly disaster. The ship accidentally rammed an iceberg, which sliced it open below the waterline. Cue panic, many deaths, and a movie by James Cameron. But did you know that an ancient Egyptian mummy may have had something to do with the terrible events that unfolded in 1912 out in the ocean? Part of the cargo on board the vessel was a wooden casket containing what was left of the Princess of Amun-Ra. Her death happened approximately a century and a half ago, and reports state that she was around before Jesus Christ. In the run up to the 20th century, this casket was purchased in Luxor when the area was being excavated. Who were the buyers? Four wealthy young men who'd come all the way from England. It changed hands before winding up at the British Museum. It was moved there before an individual in America took interest. Trouble is, he had to get it across the Atlantic, and he needed a ship to travel on enter the ill-fated RMS Titanic. So maybe the mummy had a curse and this resulted in the most famous maritime tragedy on record. Unlikely. In actual fact, the casket never went further than the British Museum. Two imaginative English gentlemen named William Stead and Douglas Murray created a narrative of death and destruction around an object they saw at the museum. This was the lid of a casket connected to a figure known as the Princess of Amun. In addition to its fictional journey on board the Titanic, the supposedly cursed casket had other tales of misery attached to it, with whoever possessed it being at the mercy of a dark fate leading to it changing hands frequently. All made up, of course. Why did Stead and Murray decide to spin this yarn? That's not entirely clear, though one thing was certain, this pair enjoyed causing a stir. There's one more twist in the tale that we need to tell you about. The Titanic part of the story wasn't entirely the author's doing. You see, William Stead was unlucky enough to be on the ship at the time, but he was on his way to a US peace conference in his capacity as a journalist. He did frighten passengers by talking about the mummy's curse, but the idea of a mummy actually being on board the vessel appears to have come later from other people, and media coverage confused the issue. Number 1. Howard Carter Now, of all the people who might have fallen prey to the curse of Tutankhamun, Howard Carter was surely at the top of the hit list. It was his name linked to the discovery of the pharaoh's tomb. His efforts working for Lord Carnarvon led us to knowing the details of the king's final resting place in the Valley of Kings. Numerous people who were either with him or associated with him appeared to be stricken by the curse. It may surprise you to learn that Carter didn't seem to be bothered by anything of a supernatural variety. In fact, he passed away at his home in London almost two decades later. Granted, he was terminally ill with Hodgkin lymphoma, but can that be put down to a vengeful pharaoh who waited years before finally snuffing him out? We're not so sure about that. There's definitely some interesting details associated with ancient Egyptian excavations that might give you pause for thought, and to wonder if these curses are real. 
Overall, it's probably a fantastic story that will never have an ending, making it more and more powerful as the years go by. Thanks for watching. Are there any entries about the supposed curse of Tutankhamun, not to mention other ancient Egyptian curses, that you think we left out? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe and see you soon.